Hello citizens, and welcome to Into the Unknown, which is a derivative of my popular avionics guides, but more focused on exploration ships, including their roles, present and future gameplay mechanics, and discussing how a player can make the best out of the ship. Now, with this being said, if you are new to my channel or Star Citizen and you would like a better understanding of the basics and how things currently work in the verse, then consider subscribing and turning on all notifications so you never miss anything. And to further optimize your knowledge of the verse, be sure to check out other videos in my channel because they're all here to guide you to success. And if you end up enjoying this series, then please tell me what ship you'd like to see next in the comments below. Today we'll be taking a look at one of the cheaper exploration ships being the 315P, a ship used by new players in the niche profession and veterans alike. Now during the video we'll start off with a pre-flight walk around where we examine the weapons package and exterior of the ship, an interior inspection showing current features the ship offers, we'll quickly look at the flight deck, and then go over some of my own recommendations for the new players and wrap up the video with my final thoughts on the ship. Let's begin. The Origin 315P is the pocket explorer of the 300 series, combining luxury with functionality. The role of the ship is a pathfinder, which is by definition a ship intended to go ahead and discover or show others a path or the way. So for the functionality of the ship, it includes a robust sensor suite, which includes a newly developed scanning package and also replaces the nose gun with a utility hardpoint. The ship also boasts long range with the extended quantum fuel tanks including 700 units of quantum fuel. This is in comparison to the average lighter ship that has on average 583 units of quantum fuel and comes in at the price of 65 US dollars. Now let's get a closer look and discuss the ship as we start our pre-flight walk around. I'll see you on the ground. As I mentioned earlier, the ship's nose is a utility hardpoint, and currently fitted is a sure-grip tractor beam, which can complement the ship when doing search and rescue operations. Moving to the right side of the ship is the only gun on either side being a fixed size 3 gun for a grand total of 2 guns. And next to this is a size 2 missile rack with one size 2 missile attached on either side for a grand total of 2 missiles. To the back is the engines, and surrounding it is the unique wing-like structure of the ship, and the engine intake just above. An issue I have with the 300 series is the wings because it leaves the hardpoints exposed. They can get easily shot off. Also under the ship is the cargo ramp that allows the ship to hold its 12 SCU, the highest of all 300 series. And finally, we have the landing gear with the wheels and the shock struts. Now, let's move on to the interior. The 315P, like the other variants, offers a place to rest and log off and then continue the journey. It also has a small mess, including a sink and a fridge, and a gun rack with a small closet. This can also place an FPS mining gun to use as well, but fair warning, it can get stuck and not be retrievable because of bugs. So for now, I recommend you don't use the gun racks. And of course the bed, which includes a large screen that acts as an MFD for now. And the best feature of luxury, so to speak, is the sky canopy above. The 315P also includes a head as well. Now, moving forward to the flight deck, you can expect the usual characteristics being the MFDs, inner thoughts, and your ejection seat. Being an explorer as well, we don't need to cover flight characteristics, so to speak, but the range and the utility. So, being an explorer, I chose an endurance build, which mostly consists of industrial components. For my quantum drive, I chose the light fire because I'm not worried about getting to my destination fast. I'm about conserving fuel. It has the same quantum speed as the stock one, but this one burns less quantum fuel. In fact, the light fire consumes the least amount of fuel compared to others, meaning I have better fuel conservation. While it takes longer to get to places, I'm also spending less time refueling, which saves me some cost, though it's very little. But of course, things are always subject to change. Now, this can be found at HURL1 and L2, and at Grimhex, and the station above R Corp, and all of them cost 26,450 UEC. I also did adjust my defenses to a total health pool loadout. I found the Guardians, and these can be found at HURL1, L3, CRUL4, and once again the station above Hurston, all cost 19,900 UEC each. Now, these ones are not the best but they fit my needs and they save me some cost. I also upgraded the coolers to the Thermax coolers. And again, they're not the best, but they provide me the needs necessary to cool the build I have. 
They can be found cheapest at HURL1 for 19,137 UEC each. Now, I always recommend getting good coolers and a good power plant for when you're thinking about upgrading components, because if you lose cooling efficiency or power efficiency in either area, something will give. So now for the power plant, I got the overdrive that can be also found at HURL1 and HURL2 for 15,300 and it can also be found at Grimhex for 15,277 UEC. Now remember this citizens, you don't always have to emulate the belt I chose. Always do your own research because things change over time. While things may help me in the current build, it doesn't mean it will always be the same later down the road. Anyways, to learn more about ship components, then please check out my personal video on how components work and go to the links below to find prices, locations, and different items within the game. Now, let's discuss the present versus the future for the ship. In the present build of 3.8, the ship is another glorified starter ship in a way. Rather than sightseeing, there is no legitimate exploration gameplay. So making a living now with a 315P gives you some options. But in the future, the use of different utility slots combined with the cargo and the exploration mechanics will allow you to gather things you find to sell later rather than just the information. Another big factor is bigger doesn't always mean the best for the job. Remember citizens, jump points can come in different sizes and ships like the 315P will be among the few in its profession to navigate a small jump point. In fact, it should be able to navigate all jump points because of the size. In comparison, the ship is also similar to the Mustang Beta. Both have the same quantum units, offer a living space, and can scout out ahead. Now the difference is the fact that the 315P has an SU grid, the Beta doesn't, and that can also be used to store mission boxes, when of course they actually work, along with the gun racks too. And while the Beta does offer more hardpoint slots, and also has a cost difference. Currently the Beta comes stock with two weapons and could fit two more size ones, and has a locked rocket pod slot that may turn to a missile rack later on. The cost difference is $25 at minimum because it can vary due to the customization the 300 series offers. Now, if you have a Kraken and you want a cheap scouting ship, I would say just earn either in-game and save your hard-earned money for a different ship. Both can be earned in-game currently and are under 1 million UEC each. Obviously, this is not set in stone, but this just shows you the in-game value of the ships. Now, for present income gathering, putting the reoccurring bug aside for delivery missions, which are near impossible right now, you can do a decent amount of cargo hauling for a small size ship and can make a steady source of income by covering multiple delivery missions at once. With an efficiency build, you can cover more ground over time without having to consider refueling more often. And again, harping on the bugs like repairing, rearming, and fueling, this helps you just stay away from the frustrating bugs because you're conserving more fuel over time. While you can do regular combat missions, in my opinion, if you're a new player, you're at a huge disadvantage because you lose a weapon hard point and the default shredders have a very low munitions count compared to other ballistic weapons in the size. So for the new player, size 3 shredders may not be the best choice for you. I recommend going gimbaled size 2 guns that are energy based for the time being until you feel confident in your abilities. Or you can just go practice in arena commander and get a feel for them just to save money altogether. Now going back to customization, the 315P also can be customized on the website with its trim, ship paint, interior cosmetics, and weapon package that have different components and missiles too. I personally think you do not need any of the packages for the ship. All the weapons, missiles, and components are able to be purchased in game. In fact, with all the additional things you can buy that add little to no function currently, you could get a Cutlass Black after fully customizing the 315P for around 20 bucks more give or take depending on what configuration you want within the website. Honestly, just figure out what the purpose of the ship is to you. Then again, do your research on what components will fit it best, and then tailor the ship as such to your own liking. Before you even buy the ship though, please attempt to try it out at R Corp in-game for a buying price of around 882,000 UEC. Now, don't be intimidated by the price because there are plenty of money-making guides out there, or even ask a buddy to try it out. However, if it's your first ship and you are absolutely set in stone on the purchase, then I hope after this, you do not get buyer's remorse and you get what you want out of the ship now and then 
get more out of the ship once the necessary game mechanics come into play. As always, I thank you all for the love and support. If you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it, then please take the time to like it and share it with anybody who would find this helpful. Also, tell me your own thoughts on the 315p in the comments below. And again, feel free to subscribe. Remember citizens, your subscriptions help me reach out even further to the community so they also can benefit from my content. And if you would like to further support me, feel free to further support me on Patreon. It's never necessary, guys, but it's always appreciated. But until next time, fellow citizens, I will see you on the flip side.